All right. So here's here's what I want to talk about. Right. Oh, are you here, sure, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give it all away because I told Chana right before this. Give it I'm gonna give away. a summary, quick summary. Right. I'm of the impression now, right, that the directivity index and yeah. the early ref- reflection directivity index is probably the most important aspect of the speaker. Like it's, this is the one that I didn't really care to look at before. Like I, I didn't know what it did. I, you know, I didn't really understand it very well, yes. but now my mindset is this is more the most important thing. Why? Why do I say that? Because all this, right? Yes. You can EQ, you can do EQ on that. That's what magic beans does, right? We right. EQ, we EQ speakers to sound better, right? In your room. But you know what I can't fix? I can't fix the physical properties of a speaker. Correct. No matter what. Crossover. Whatever that is. Yeah. If the speaker's doo-doo, it's doo-doo. Speaker's doo-doo. Yeah. So I've never been able to look at this properly. Right? I've never looked at this and said, like, ah, I get it. I get what that is. You know what I'm talking about, Aaron? Did yeah, I, you're the one who take you, you take all these measurements. Do you do you feel like you can read this like and and say, oh, I know it, I know exactly what that means? Because I mean, yeah, I guess like without sounding late, like, uh, but yeah, there's something that 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 I can um that I would like to show you guys. Actually, I might as well show it. Might as well show it. All right. So it's something that you did actually a while back on this other review. <laughs> Let me show you something. Uh, here. Oh, Aaron, I see you sweating, bro. I see you getting red. He's like, oh, no. I guess he equalized the speaker, right? He looked at it and figured out where he could equalize it and then showed, proved it out, right? Well, yeah. So on this Encore B6, and I don't know why your directivity looks different than mine, but this looks, (laughs) it looks very weird. But anyway, um, something that you did here that you don't typically do that like made me say, whoa. Yeah. Hold up a second. All right. So normally you don't really EQ the speaker, right? Right. right. So uh, in this case, you did though. You said, "All right, I'll, I'm going to EQ this speaker to flat, and let's see what it does." Mm-hmm. So of course, the directivity doesn't change. You could EQ that to whatever you want, and this will never change, right? Because yeah. that this is a uh, uh, the difference between what happens on axis versus. Uh, the sound power, right? Yeah. Listening when I, I think for TA twenty thirty four, it's listening window. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. I always get those confused. Which yeah. one the sound power one is? Um, and then the other one is the difference between listening window and this early reflections, right? Yeah. But notice what happens. So you flattened out the speaker, but look what happened to the early reflections, mm-hmm. and look what happened to the sound power. Yeah. Does that look similar to this? Yeah. It looks like the inverse. Right. Which makes sense. Like it makes sense that that's the case. Yeah, but it would look closer to it if I'd have flattened out the listening window because that's what it's compared to, right? So what I was going to say. Yeah, if you chose the listening window to flatten out, it would have looked even more similar. Mm -hmm. But what this, in other words, in other words, if you flatten out the on-axis response, which you can do with EQ, make it more an ideal speaker. Right. The question is, what happens off-axis? Right. What happens in your listening window? What happens mm-hmm. when you look around the speaker? Well, we know this is exactly what happens on this spe- on this speaker. Your your on axis is going to be flat, but off axis is going to be all like not so not so great. Yeah. Now I, I again, if, if the off axis response already isn't good, com- like in line with the on axis response, right? You have to throw that caveat in there. Mm. So like the, the off the those two the curves that you're looking at could mm-hmm. look good. If the directivity looked good, you know, if, but my, my point just being that it's very interesting that by, by flattening the on axis, the early reflections and the sound power look like inverses of these. Yeah. So, so that tells me that this is kind of the sound that's happening. Uh, The early reflections are probably going to sound like this. If we were to flatten out this, it's just a different way to think about it. Yeah, it helps sure. me understand it. And so I went in and I started doing something kind of different. Let's see here. Let me open this up. Mm. 
<clears throat> okay. So tell me if this makes sense to you. Uh oh. Mm hmm. Cool. You're doing it. Sweating. He's like, what? What, 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 I do wrong? what I do wrong? I'm looking at the comment from Chris asking, what's a Nakamichi dragon? <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I saw that too. <laughs> That's a what I'm paying attention to. Indeed. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, man. So, okay. So here's those monoliths. Sure. <laughs> That's just a sound bar that costs a zillion dollars. Michael Walker actually has one. It's the most fantastic okay. sound system, aka don't call it a sound bar. Okay, so here's the monolith satellite speakers that we we have, Chana. Right? Yes. And so when I look at it, okay, there's some issues on axis. Mm -hmm. And then here's the here's the sound power uh directivity index and the early reflections. Now I know I'm supposed to look at that and say, well, wherever it's flat. That's where it's EQable, right? Yeah, and we're linear, not, right? Yeah, linear, like not flat, but not perfectly linear. flat. But you yeah. know, it can as long as the as a, there's a line to it, you know, mm -hmm. you don't want to change, right? Yeah, okay. Whenever there's so, a shift, that indicates that it's going to be less adaptable via EQ. Now, here's the thing: I still like no, I know that, but it doesn't. It didn't click in my mind until I just did this. So I took this, and then I flipped it vertically. Oh, now, yeah. I see. Dude, I look at that. I'm like, oh, I see what is correctable and not correctable. I'm like, yeah. I called Paul about this right before the show. I'm like, how dumb is my brain where I can't see it until I flip it? Right. The moment I flip it, I'm like, oh, I totally get what's happening. I, I see where it's correctable and not mm -hmm. because it looks like the frequency response that I'm used to looking at. Yeah, that makes sense. I hadn't and considered so, looking at it that way, but yeah, I see what you're saying. It's just if a I linearize this, different right? way of looking I, at it. If I linearize on axis, this mm -hmm. is what I should expect uh, for the early reflections, and this is what I should expect for the sound power right. as a response. I right. think, right. unless I'm... So I started doing it for other speakers. Here's the uh, ELAC... What is it? What is that? DBR65? DBR I can't tell. So, if I linearize on axis, this is what happens, right? I'm like, ooh. DBR oh, okay. 62. Yeah. 62, okay. Yeah. And it kind of makes sense. Like, when I look at it this way, I'm like, oh, there's a JBL 4325. I'm just inverting it. What is it? Martin Logan motion. Right? Yeah. So, I don't know. The less bad of the, of the Martin Logans that I've listened to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's so interesting because then then you get into like uh, this calf, right? So to me, what no this cap. says is I want something where on axis, if I, if I make it flat, I want the other ones to be like kind of smooth at least. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when they say a smooth line, well, right. that makes sense. If I make it flat, I want the off axis to kind of look the same except downward sloping, which we expect because the treble as you get off axis, you know, all stuff you'd expect. Here's the uh, calf meta. All right. Other than this, that looks pretty good to me um i was kind of surprised that this revel one is a little bit weird yeah so you got to take into account though that there's the horizontal and the vertical components to that right right so if you look at my in my reviews i'll have the linearity graph and then mm -hmm. in that linearity graph i have just the horizontal directivity right and is that for is that, that reason the same way too because it looks like it's a little thinner like it's a little squashed no or is it the same scale as this uh it should be the same scale yeah it should really? be 50 dB. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so the horizontal, most of the time, the horizontals will look pretty smooth. And what you'll see the difference is it's because of the vertical. So uh, like the revel is the, the distance between the tweeter and the, and the midwoofer. I, I would say, I don't know how they weight it, but I feel like the vertical has a little too much weight in those. Like, yeah, well, it's, um, so it depends on which one you're looking at. Right. Like I think it's it just, in, just in general, I feel like horizontal is more, Oh, I agree. I, I talked to Dr. Tool about that. Did I mention this to you? I talked yeah, to somebody about briefly. this recently. Yeah, and, and he was saying basically like the vertical isn't as much of an issue as we might think, and that in some testing they actually removed the floor. I guess they tested like oh, yeah. an anechoic chamber or something like that, or, or maybe they simulated. I can't remember what now, but that people didn't like it when the floor bounce was removed. Mm -hmm. was like, well, that's interesting. It seemed too unnatural. You're used to hearing sound like that, so... It's an Here, interesting here's perspective. Polk R200. What are these? Man, it's, oh, the Mo, the MoFi Source 0.10 concentric. Yeah, 
Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. It's just so interesting that all I have to do is flip and I'm like, I get it. <laughs> yeah. I just get it way more by looking at that. Um, what is this? Clitch. Oh, this one was, I thought was interesting too. So Article. this is the mostly the vertical. Yeah. Okay. yeah so here, sure. here's from experience though. This is a, an experience thing. I've done uh, calibration for some people with Klipsch speakers. Mm-hmm. And let me flip it back the normal way here. This is a little different because these are uh, these are powered and they have DSP already flattening it out. Mm-hmm. But normally the the trouble is, you know, they have a rising trouble response on some of the other passive yeah, yeah. speakers, yeah. and so I typically try to turn that down, right? Mm-hmm. Make on axis and listening window a little bit more linear. But then people are like, sounds a little too uh, too dead. Mm-hmm. There's not enough trouble. Mm-hmm. Well, why is that? Why is there not enough trouble? Well, if I if I flip this and I look at what happens to the directivity index, if I try to you know make it flat, well, off axis is going to be way less trouble. Yeah, you know, it's just very easy to see from this right, what narrow. exactly happens. So I have to make a choice. I'm like either run the trouble hot, where the on axis is hot, but the reflections are. I guess less, uh, you know, less scooped out than this, but I can't make both of them lines. I have to figure out a way to. Yeah. That's, that's the problem with a speaker like that, that has constant directivity. Look at the response above 2k. I mean, it's almost flat, right? Mm -hmm. Like in the directivity index. So uh, a flat sounding speaker on axis with constant directivity is usually going to sound bright in room. And I can tell you that by looking at the blue line where you got to flip the ERDI or the mm-hmm. ER, the early reflections. Mm-hmm. Um, not that one, but the other one. You mean flip it? If you unflip it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, so that blue line where it flattens out, normally that'll track reasonably close to the estimated interim response. And since it's kind of scooped through that 2K range, and then it flattens out, that speaker's going to sound a little bit bright in room. So mm-hmm. the best, in my opinion, the best thing to do is either add a little bit of absorption on the sidewalls to help knock down that top end or use a um a low pass filter like a shelf filter mm. you know that can that can angle not like uh, i don't know i'm trying to think of the proper filter there that i'm thinking of but maybe a shelf filter set at like 20k and drop down two or three db so it'll tilt that top end on axis response and yeah you know sure. i don't want it flat sure. you know mm-hmm. so that's the thing i actually just talked about this in the bacart review sometimes speakers that have Flat directivity uh, sound worse in the room because they actually wind up sounding bright in room. So mm-hmm. if it's a flat response on axis, so you wanted a, a slightly tilted on axis response. A good example of that is Kef's reference one meta. It has mm-hmm. maybe like a half a dB, maybe a dB between one kilohertz to about 10 kilohertz, like slope down on axis. Mm-hmm. And it's done, at least in my opinion, to combat the flat directivity because otherwise it would sound bright in room. Right. So, but yeah, things like room treatment matters, aiming matters. If you've got curtains, those things matter. You know, it, it it's not a one size fits all when you're talking about this stuff, which is really fun when you look at the data because you can start to picture like so and so says this speaker sounds bad. Show me a picture of their room. Ah, I got it. I know why. Yeah. You know? See, I, I'm not. I'm not an engineer. Like, I'm just not an engineer, but I try to understand some of the principles so I can simplify it to normal people for normal people. Yeah. You know, people who are not in into that stuff. Right. So to me, the takeaway is if you have a speaker that doesn't have good off axis response, you can you can EQ on axis, but it's going to make off axis worse. Right. Yeah. So in those cases, that's when room treatment actually makes a, more of a difference because you're you don't want those reflections. Right. Right. And I think that that's why when we're, I was talking to Paul, he's like, maybe that's why people like these clip speakers, because if you don't have a good room and you're just kind of like aiming this directly at you, right? It's very, very narrow. Very narrow. Yeah. Maybe it kind of works in that situation for people, you know? Yeah. Anyway, that's why this stuff isn't a one size fits all, you know, like it's just trying to explain it, try to give as much data as you can. And hopefully it's useful. Yeah. Here's that's that. Uh, Here's uh you were saying that the uh, uh, early reflections is similar. So I took this is this this one right here with your face yeah. on it. 
Yeah. This is uh, the early. This is your uh, estimated in-room response. Okay. So I just kind of take the took took it like halfway here. So fifty percent opacity, and then I overlaid it over those other ones, those flipped ones. Yeah. And let me I let me align the uh, things a little bit better here. But like, no, no, uh -oh. it's not this one. Hold on, sorry. Uh -oh. yeah. Not this one. Hold on a second. Not supposed to be flipped. Hold on a second. Oh, God. Uh, rotate. I'm busy. I'm busy. Vertical. Here we go. This one. Okay. So busy. it's kind of like we were saying it looks very similar to yeah. early reflections. So you yeah. can see it's right behind it right there. Right. So this blue line is the early reflections. This is the um, estimated in room response, which has different weights, right? Right. So it weights adds like some weight. But I think it's like if you just wanted to look at that, I'm like, that's pretty, that's pretty close. Yeah, most of the time, I, I just look at the CEA, look at the early reflections, and I'm like, all right, I, I kind of get an idea off of that. I don't have to have the estimated interim response. Yeah. So anyway, I was just playing with a lot of this stuff because I just thought it was very interesting. Like, here's, here's the, uh, if you look at it, how it relates to this, right? I'm just mm -hmm. hoping that this helps other people understand what's happening. Yeah. Right. So I'm looking at the directivity, sound power directivity index. And if you kind of overlay it over this contour plot, yeah, that you do, I mean, they select. You can kind of see, like, oh, I see the pattern. I see how they how it relates to this. Yeah, medium. I would. Uh, I'd follow the the blue line for that because that's horizontal, the and the line. blue line has less vertical implied in it. You know, so mm -hmm. I think it just kind of depends, or or somewhat of a comment you got to be really careful with that one though you know because if you mm -hmm. if you're looking at a speaker uh -oh. that has a large discrepancy in the vertical mm -hmm. and you try to overlay it on top of that horizontal contour it, it mm -hmm. won't line up right because the directivities have the vertical aspect in it too so. right right i get you i hear what you're saying but anyway i think this is just help people kind of understand like how it's, yeah, all no, it's interrelated that's cool. Right? Cool. I and like then it, i'm just doing some random stuff where uh where is it So like I took the I took that plot right, and this oh, is why yeah I'm yeah stuff right. If you yeah. take this plot and I put it this way, and then I I take it and I uh, go from I'm rectangular sure. to polar. Yeah, like, stretch it out. Yeah, so yeah, that's cool. Getting, like, anyway, this is all I stuff like that it. I was messing around with just because I don't know for no reason. Why not, right? But yeah, I think what I'm trying to do is trying to figure out a way to take some quick measurements without a clipple. And just to get a decent idea of what is a speaker doing, you know, so I can I can help people out a little bit better. I anyway, no, I anyway, like it, man. That's good. That's good stuff. Well, make sure to join us every Monday for our live stream at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern at YouTube.com/slash/DailyIFI.